I hope you're enjoying the second season of the Zista podcast. Today, we're going to be continuing our conversation with Dr. Kiran and going deeper into the field of aerospace engineering. Welcome to the Zista podcast, where we invite industry leaders and academicians to answer questions that students have within a particular area. My name is Amit Ahuja, and I'm your host for today. Today, we're going to be talking about aerospace engineering, and joining us once again is Dr. Kiran. Dr. Kiran is leading R&D and strategic initiatives at Skyroot Aerospace. He's worked with ISRO, studied in India, Germany, and made rock solid contributions, published scientific publications, and an absolute expert. Let's go straight into the session. Thank you for coming back on the podcast, Dr. Kiran. We're delighted to welcome you again. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Let's continue the conversation from where we left off. And I remember it was a really interesting discussion on aerospace engineering, on the opportunities that exist in India, and I'd like to kind of move forward in that direction. So I wanted to ask you, when you look at, say, aerospace engineering in India versus abroad, what is your view in terms of, say, studying, firstly, in India versus abroad? And secondly, in terms of the working context, you know, working as an aerospace engineer in India versus abroad. If you could comment on that, it would be really helpful. So aerospace engineering is a strategic field. So let's try to understand what uh, are the backbone of any country in the world. So the backbone of any country in the world, any country in the world, are the strategic sectors. Space, defense, and atomic energy are the three major strategic sectors which drive any field of engineering or sciences and lead to the entire development of a significant uh, portion of the country. And if you look at uh, the strategic sector of space, which we are currently talking about, of course, people preserve the strategic sectors very closely. They don't let most of the information fly out of the space strategic sectors. Uh, it's not only with one country, but every country does it, even our own country. And uh, uh, if you look at the overall scenario, when we go and study abroad for a particular uh, in a particular field of a strategic sector, what happens is that the amount of uh, information, what we get in terms of practical experiences, gets limited. And the second point is that once we are uh, getting in terms of uh, what is happening in in uh, the strategy sector everywhere in the world, of course we get it from the news, but we are used to work most of the time with that. And when we go there with a lot of hopes, uh, we'll be working on topics not near that topic because of the fact that they are in the strategy sector. But when we are within our country, we have the entire freedom to work in all the strategic sectors. Of course, there are limitations, but these limitations are being overcome. Now through a lot of, uh, you know, favorable policies of the government, which will be conducive for the infrastructure development. So we are uh, in an era where the infrastructure is being developed. And we are also to be cautious that if we do not have an infrastructure, do not say that we don't have the infrastructure, so we have to go abroad, but let's develop it here. Why not develop it here? So right. if we do not have a machine, people have the tendency to buy the machine. And yeah, say we have the machine, they're happy. That attitude should be out of the students and people should start building their own machines. Just consider the case of a 3D printer. Most of the 3D printers are imported. Absolutely. It could be something small and then, you know, if it works well, then we could do it at a bigger scale. Yes. That attitude change should be within the mindset of the people, of the students, wherein the infrastructure will automatically develop. And this is a great learning curve. So what happens is that after a particular amount of time, if the infrastructure, an imported one, for example, would die because of lack of parts or lack of spares. And what is the situation when we have our own infrastructure, which has been developed and everything is within the country? 
there is no end of life it makes a lot of so, sense and and you're really saying it what you're saying now kind of links back to what we discussed earlier about the fact that we need more indigenous products that students really need to be passionate it. if students are passionate they will be motivated to dive deeper in within a particular subject to understand if a particular infrastructure or if some machine is not available how do i go about making that a fresh in our own country and i think that would help india a great deal absolutely basically driving the atmanirbharta right thank you for that dr kiran you know when i was going through your profile it what struck me really clearly was that you know you've done some great work in the field of material science and engineering in the field of metallurgy and materials technology and uh i wanted to ask you you know how did that really contribute to your current role you no know, right now you are looking at r&d and strategic initiatives at skyroad aerospace and it's a fairly big uh, profile as i can imagine but um when you were a material engineer did you imagine that one day you'd be working in the aerospace industry and handling such a dynamic portfolio uh, no absolutely not but uh, i had uh, since my childhood the deep deep penchant towards uh, uh, embracing new technologies so uh, i remember using uh, the first gps system with my mother during a field trip on her uh, uh, sample collection activity in uh, karnataka okay and uh, i first time used the gps i said this doesn't have uh, anything what is it it's gps it doesn't have anything it doesn't know anything and i was very very unhappy to use that quality of the gps and i still cannot forget the locations what we marked on that day and this technology what are you know new in a particular field and when they change and when they develop over the years has actually you know made me inquisitive a lot and lot as a child itself i used to meddle with lot of electronic stuff okay i used to repair a lot of stuff at home my parents used to say no 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 you get a shock when you touch them so i cannot forget those things but uh, in addition to all these activities i was also uh, blessed to be with very very nice teachers who used to motivate me a lot because at the end of the day uh, the whole building up of a person is through the teachers how they impart education and also the character into ourselves so i was blessed with all these things and i also had a very nice privilege of working with extremely ethical people like especially professor popel uh, during my whole phd studies and uh, professor kingler who was uh, i cannot forget the words what he could probably i'll tell you now uh, sure he said when a person comes to you uh, asking for uh, any type of uh, help in a, a particular experiment or so if you if you know the field explain him through the process of explaining a person what you know you will learn a lot if the person asks you a question you try to answer it if not at least try to give him a path by this way you learn the topic because you you're going to refer that again later because you were not able to answer it and you also develop the next person that sort of an attitude should be there for everyone who are working in it it's not like i have the knowledge and i'm not going to take the knowledge and take it along with me when i pass away from the world right so that attitude and ethics have been built up uh, in my sense uh, right from my childhood and uh, they have been made very strong by these both, both people from sakinla and uh, professor popel like can never forget uh, and uh, i had also the privilege of working with uh, dr cuban christian cuban the professor now by the way and uh, i had rejected my name on multiple papers because of ethical reasons and i am happy to say that i have also not published around more than 15 publication because of ethical reasons i still keep them in shelf i like the work but because of ethical reasons i just keep it on the shelf okay and so this is really very important. very that's very very important because of the fact that the next generation who are are coming out should be very very ethical and transparent especially when it comes to the space sector if one does a mistake in space what happens is that it reflects on as a ripple effect 
and can lead to catastrophic damages. So one has to avoid all those uh, things. So ethics and uh, you know building up of uh, you know people is very important, especially in career. And through that, I went on further into my career. And uh, ISRO made a change, great change. And further on, when I moved, I took the you know challenge of uh, joining a startup because at startup you learn a lot. And uh, I'm very, very passionate to especially learn new things. That's amazing. And I think this holds true for all students. You know, uh, any student that you see who does well in life has had the good fortune of having trained under, worked other, uh, under a good mentor, a good professor, a good teacher. They really help us. They shape us and they guide us. And the words that they say stay with us as you so easily remembered what your professors told you. And I think it has served you well in your life. So when you asked me about materials and how I ended up into aerospace, right? materials are actually used, metallurgy and materials are used in various fields, not only in one field. So when I was doing my bachelor's in metallurgy and materials at the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, that was the only college which was offering that course. And people said, you have many other opportunities and why did you choose that? I was passionate about materials because of the fact that it has multi-phased approach. So it can be used in various fields of engineering. That was the reason why I chose materials as the primary, you know, subject for me. And I continued that until date I have a deep uh, understanding of materials and I have the privilege of working with so many variety of materials in my life. That's amazing. And now you're working with very different materials, materials that I use in the form of uh, in, in launch vehicles. And so, you know, reliability and safety is so important. So uh, it's, it's, I guess the pressure on you is also high, but your experience is uh, seasoned you, I would say, to do well in your job. And uh, it's amazing to hear about your journey. Thank you. Wanted to ask you, Dr. Kiran, uh, about the perks of, you know, creating a career as an aerospace engineer. Uh, what could a student aspire to within, say, a five-year horizon uh, after graduating? So, when we talk about, uh, you know, what we do after that career, one of the most important points when people come out and then say, I want to have a career in this field, he or she should understand the deepest possible roots of that and where his or her strength lies in. And people should not follow the instinct of, I want money. I'm only right. going to work if I have this amount of money. But the learning curve is equally important. I'm not saying money is not important at all. Money is important, but it should be secondary and learning should be more important than money. At the initial stages, when we come out and when we join a company, the most important point for any person should be learning and establishing him or herself in a particular field. That should be the main goal and adapt will strengthen the person automatically. And people should be constantly, constantly, but not that whatever they have learned is done. Learning is completely going on process. It never stops. You know, when we were children, our parents used to say, yeah, when you finish your seventh class, uh, you used to have an examination. And when you're done with seventh class, you get a certificate. Yeah, that's done. When you're finished with the tenth class, yeah, you did the big step. <laughs> and people always used to think there's no more further, more matter, like this amount of pressure. But as we go on in life, this learning curve never ends. The day learning curve stops, at the end of life. Very true. When we stop learning, we get static. And when we get static, we begin to suffocate. So learning is equal to movement. Movement is equal to progress. And everyone loves to progress. Everyone loves to do well. So to keep learning is a philosophy that you need to embrace and have throughout the journey of your life. And one would say that a student's real learning begins after graduating, right? So there's so much <laughs> that you learn from textbooks perhaps even from yes. projects. 
but your real learning starts when you join a job and you're learning on the job so uh, what you're saying makes a lot of sense because when we see a lot of uh, you know people coming out of uh, fresh out of their colleges and when they get into new positions not only at skyrock but everywhere else uh, yeah people are more relaxed with the context saying that i have i know enough but i know enough is good i should know more much more i i subscribe to your viewpoint and when you dive deeper you do learn more when you're curious you do learn more when you're passionate you do learn more so you need to be all of the above and more <laughs> yes absolutely and basically this leads to the fact that one gets obsessed into the field and that is the thing and people also have the habit of narrowing uh, down their field in initial stages which never should happen people should keep it as much broad as possible as we grow higher in career towards uh, you know post graduation automatically things narrow up but until then as much as possible people should be as much broad as possible especially the students of the next generation um before we part i just like to ask you if there's any uh, word of advice you'd like to give to young people who may want to have their own aerospace startup i know it's very capital intensive but if not aerospace if they were to have their own engineering startup is any word of advice or uh, guidance that you'd like to give them start immediately and remember it's not only the idea but also the financial aspect the business aspect make your business model as much stronger as possible idea is very important but also the business model is equally important never neglect that that's good advice all summed up in one line and uh, <laughs> really very good advice there so thank you for that thank you nice talking to you and thank you for the invitation also thank you dr kiran it was really again it was really good to talk to you again and uh, you know thank you for coming on the podcast thank you dr kiran had a lot of good advice to share with us and there's a lot that we can reflect on follow us on youtube if you like what you saw you're going to get notifications when new content goes live follow us on google podcast apple podcast and spotify to keep this new content like this our handle is the sista podcast we're going to come back once more with some great content until we meet again we'd say stay curious <laughs>